Hello. Hello, Professor. Yeah, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good, good. So let us uh, round up. Um, I'm glad you can hear me. <laughs> so um, let me share my screen again. So uh, last uh, session we covered mar uh, introduced marketing mix. Now in this session, we're looking at uh, brands, element of branding. Um, I'm sure you must have heard this word for brands. We buy cologne, we buy cars, we buy microwave, we buy clothes. You know, all these things are the the type of clothes we buy, the type of microwave we buy, the type of watch we buy. We look at the brands. Those are the things that make us uh, of course to buy want to buy those uh product because of um the type of brand they are especially especially if you can afford it. And Miss uh, Miss Valeria, right? Valeria, right? Last time you told me in the class that you 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 use Apple products, Apple phone, Apple yeah. um, Apple Watch, right? And Apple um laptop, right? Yes. You told me you are good. There's a reason for that. You like Apple brand, you know. That's why yeah. you buy those. You, you always uh, whenever somebody shows that say that okay, buy this phone, and if, if if you ask, is it an Apple phone, an iPhone? The person say yes. It's it's a click on your mind. Oh, this is a, it must be a quality a quality phone. You buy it. so that is what branding is about. Branding consists of all the features that distinguish uh one good or service uh from the other. You know, mm. so there's a reason why some uh, even it uh, it happened in services too. Um, there's a reason why some some people like to eat in Italian restaurants. There are reason why some people want to eat in that's the restaurant they call Longhorn. Some people want to eat there, so when they want to eat certain food, they go to that particular one. There's some reason why some people want to buy food from those who are especially those who who claim. Or I would say clear. I, I don't want to use the word claim, but they believe they are health conscious, so they want to buy from Chipotle, you know, and so on and so forth. So this has to do with branding. So, uh, so at this point, again, let me uh, re, uh, restate the definition of a brand. Now, uh, when we say branding, we are referring to all the features that distinguish the goods or services of one seller from another. Things like the name, term, design, style, symbols, customer touch point, and so on and so forth. Um, so, and and don't get me wrong, uh, is uh, those people that buy those a particular brand, they have a reason for that. And the company that sell those brands, they spent years, years to promote that product or service improve on it at a point now they become known that brand i'll give you another example let's assume that you want to start a business let's say a restaurant um a new restaurant uh nobody knows who you are i don't mean I, when i say that i don't mean that nobody knows who you have to say i mean the name of your restaurant is not known so you're gonna take you years it might take you only a few years. It depends on the quality of the product and uh, of the of your food, and the of course the service you have. So you can build a, a name within a year, two years, and uh, then. But that means uh, when you start the restaurant, you have to start advertising, creating new customers. You know, it takes time to build a brand. But if you want to go franchise way. Uh, Miss um, Lily, can you hear me? Lily, you there? Yes, I can hear. You 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 are working at a coffee shop, right? I quit. <laughs> you quit. Okay. Anyway, before before you quit, what's the name of the the, the store? Is it a uh, uh um um that this popular that this popular brand that people always buy um? Is uh, it it's a local business. 
okay, it's a local business. Okay, okay. Yeah. M it's maybe it is. Maybe it is known in that area, right? Probably known in that area. Oh yeah, it's well known mm. in that area. Yeah. 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 There's a particular one that I'm thinking of. I I, I always forget that name. Uh is a coffee. Is a coffee. Um, coffee shop known all over the world. Starbucks. Huh? Yes, yeah, Starbucks. Oh now, yeah. If I want to open, uh, 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 I'll give an example with with uh, uh, with um, restaurant. Now let me finish with my example with re with restaurant. Then I'm gonna explain with, uh, with coffee shop. Now suppose that instead of um, opening your own restaurant, starting from the big from from scratch, that you decided to get a franchise for uh, Subway. That's a brand. Now you don't need to, to do much advertisement. The already, is already done. People know Subway already, right? So even if you had a Subway. In your neighborhood, anybody that comes with Subway already know what they, they are selling, already don't know what to order. But the, unlike those coming to your restaurant, they don't know really until they come. They will ask you, "Is this good? Is that you know?" So, but when you start with a brand, you start having customers immediately. So, uh, all the element of the brand, um, name, theme, design, style, symbols, customer touch. They are together, all these elements um, work as a psychological trigger or stimulus that causes an association to all the thoughts one has about the brand. So when you see a, you are hungry, you are driving through, you see the uh, sign of uh, Subway. Now, okay, this is Subway is good. I know Subway. You just stop and buy it. But this new restaurant, I don't know what they serve. You know, things like that. So it takes time to build, build a brand. The same thing with Starbucks. Instead of have opening a new coffee shop that nobody knows about, um, uh, and then start building it, building it, then you can open a Starbucks, get a franchise Starbucks. People know what it is already. They start coming. You can start making sell immediately within a few hours, as a matter of fact. You know, so that's why uh, yeah, brand this brand matters. It takes time to build. There's nothing wrong with somebody starting a business from the scratch, but when you change the resources you have. The competition you're gonna face, plus the fact that bigger stores that sell the same thing that you are selling might absorb you within a very short time, you know. So, um, but if you have what it takes to build a brand, there's nothing wrong with doing that too. So that, so I think you get the point when it comes to branding now. Now, um, because brands serve several functions, so uh, we can also. Explain. I will explain some of the some features of it brand that you know that will stick to us, and then we we'll come back and play a short clip uh, that will give us even more information about brand and branding. So brand is an identifier, like I mentioned a few, a few minutes ago. If somebody's hungry, and um, he or he or she is driving past uh, Subway, he already know or she already know what they what to order in Subway, what they sell. So uh, that name Subway have already identified the restaurant. So uh, brand is an identifier, real identifier. Even if it's McDonald's, same thing. Now another one is that a brand is a promise because uh, um, it is a promise of what the company are offering to, uh, you know, what they are providing to the people who are uh, interact with it. I mean, what they are providing to the customer. Okay. Now um. Brand is also an asset. Okay, it's an asset because a reputation it is a reputation in the marketplace that can drive price premium and customer preference for the goods. Think of a car like Mercedes. That's not that you are rich, you want to buy a car. Uh, usually people who, who who got rich from hard work, or maybe if they win a lottery, or in got an inheritance. They want to show that you are rich, that you know, they can buy Mercedes. You, when you see the you hear the word Mercedes Benz, is you ring in your head, quality, reliability, and, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's an asset, reputation too. So brand is also um a set of perceptions, uh, because it is the total of everything the customer believe, think. See, know, feel, hear, experience about that product 
for that service. Okay? Or even the organization. Now, uh, I, I, let me use a hairstyle. It's stylish. If somebody knows how to do your hair, very do, your, do the hair very, very, very well. So that thing register on your mind. Naturally, you go there to, to do your hair, you go there, you see a crowd. <laughs> because not, it's not only you that see the person that do the, do it, uh, you know, that can fix the hair so good. Uh, so that's brand up for you. Then it is a mind share in that uh, the unique, it, it, it showcases the unique position of a company or offering. So uh, I, uh, let, let me put it this way. The unique position that uh, company that offer the brand who in your customer's mind based on their past experience and what they expect in the future. See? So now, at this point, I think we are ready to um, uh, play a short clip about brand and branding. Um, let me see if I can play it here for you. Can you hear the sound? Yes or no? Do you hear the sound? I can't hear anything. Anything. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> take it, take it easy now. <laughs> All right. How about now? Thousand dollars a how month. About now? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's start. Yeah. Okay. Why are brands important? Let's take a look at one of the best brands in the world, Coca-Cola. The total market value of the company is around $175 billion. But one asset in particular makes up about $75 billion of that. And it's not the secret recipe. It's the brand. Brands are both a strategic as well as a financial asset. A strong brand creates customer loyalty and that increases the value of your company, value which can grow if you continue to invest in the brand. There are many other benefits of brands. Brands allow you to set higher prices for your products and services. People associate higher quality to branded products, and they'll pay more than for a generic version even when the two products are identical. Why? Because they trust the branded product more. Yeah. Brands make and keep their promises. Once your product is branded, you typically earn a higher market share while lowering your cost of sales. Loyal customers don't need to be marketed to as much. With an established brand, it's easier to launch new products. When consumers see the brand's logo on a new product, they instantly associate the brand promise to that new product from day one. There are other benefits of brands than just the marketing advantages. For example, studies show that companies with great brands have lower employee turnover. Popular brands help companies recruit the most talented and passionate employees. Brands create status and esteem for your company in the minds of industry leaders, community leaders, the media, and financial markets like Wall Street. But despite all these benefits, it may not make sense for you to create a brand. There are certain business situations where it would be a waste of money. For example, in completely new markets where there are very few, if any, customers, you'd be smarter to invest your resources in growing awareness and interest in the category first. If you're already the market leader with most of the market share, creating a brand probably won't pay off. If you're in a highly fragmented industry with hundreds or even thousands of small competitors, a brand may not be able to reach enough customers to make it worthwhile. If you're a business is such that you have only a handful of customers, perhaps even one customer like the government, branding won't do much. So take a look at your situation before you jump right into it. But if your business depends on creating loyal repeat customers, a strong brand is the surest way to do it. The branding process has five steps. 
First, we have to define the brand and everything that goes into it. A brand is a promise. So we have to clearly define what that promise is and the core values behind it. Think of the values as the DNA of the brand. At this step, we also define how the brand links to your overall business and other brands that you may have. Brands don't exist in isolation, so we have to give them a home, so to speak, somewhere in your portfolio. We also have to define what are called brand drivers. Brand drivers define how the core values will be manifested into the marketing mix or key business processes that support the brand. It's all the things associated with the brand that help you translate its value into actions. The next step of the branding process is to position the brand. Essentially, we are shaping how customers think about the brand. We identify who those customers are, what benefits they seek from your products and services, and what they currently believe about those products and services versus the competition. At this step, we're making the direct link between the product's value proposition and the brand promise. Once you define the brand promise and how it's positioned in the marketplace, you need to express the brand. Imagine the brand as a person. A person needs a name, a personality, and an identity in terms of what they look like. You do the same for brands. At this step, we create brand names and logos to help customers easily recognize the brand and remember the promise that it delivers. At this stage, it's time to build awareness of the brand and put it to work for you. Now, I'll, um, this video, um, let me show you where it is located so you can be very interesting. I recommend that you watch it um, and read the chapter and then before you you know, do the test. But this video will explain so many things about branding. So it's right here, this slide. Um, by the way, I have this slide for you in, the, in Canva so you can uh, download it. It's right here. You can see the brand and branding on the YouTube link to that. So let us continue. Um, so uh, brand create perception. I, th I think I have explained that already. Uh, so um, so this perception, when we say that the brand creates perception, what are those perceptions? Well, um, we say that the perceptions are the result of past advertising. Uh, like I explained before, do that do the brand have already advertised extensively, spent good uh, large amount of money in research and development and then in advertisement. So they have really done it before. So they have built brand loyalty. When you build brand loyalty, you don't need much advertising anymore. Um, of course, you can still need to advertise, but not as much as you need before. So the brand position are a direct result of past advertising, past promotion, uh, past uh, reputation, and customer experience. So customers have used this product. They have seen it advertised many times. Uh, they have good experience with the product. They have associated with the product. So that means it influences their perception about the product. So, uh, so now, um, simply put, a brand can convey multiple levels of meaning. To the customer who knows who, know, who you knows or who uses the brand. First one is attributes. There are specific features a brand has. For example, the Mercedes Benz brand uh, suggests expensive, well built, well engineered, and durable vehicles. Yeah. So when you have the Mercedes, Mercedes Benz brand, and you are convinced in your mind that you have. Uh, a car that uh, is expensive, it is well built, it's the after all, it's German engineering, it is well engineered, it's durable vehicle, some is super last one. Then the brand communicates uh, this uh, um, meaning too, benefits. So when we say benefits uh, with, in the, with respect to brand, uh, we are, what, what we are trying to say that the brand uh, is an Attributes is an attribute that um, translate into the functional and emotional benefits we get from the brand. For example, Mercedes Benz, we get uh, this benefit, uh, benefit of um, prestige, luxury, reliability, wealth, and safety. Yeah. 
Now, Blanc also communicate this uh, a message, company, I mean, values. So, um, now, uh, I, I will use the example again, the Mercedes Benz, it evokes company values around the excellence, high performance and power, which lead us to culture. Now, it's one of the experience that brand uh, evokes. So, cultural elements of the company and the brand. So, we have Mercedes to present German precision, discipline, efficiency, and quality. Okay. Uh, personality, uh, a brand uh, often projects um, a distinctive personality. So, um, now, I think I mentioned prestige before, but we have Mercedes Benz. Uh, people see that you own a Mercedes Benz and maintain a Mercedes Benz. So, it projects a distinct personality of, um, it, it projects the personality of wealth, luxury, efficiency, and prestige. The user as well. Now, um, according to the, uh, if, uh, in fact, if you watch all the advertisements about brands, different brands on TV, on the internet, in newspapers and magazines, you will not fail to find that this one, I'm about to say that, that brand may suggest the type of consumers who buy and use the products. So, um, Mercedes, Mercedes drivers might be perceived and classified as different from those who drive a Cadillac, Corvette, and BMWs. So these are these are the these are the images we build into our head about a particular brand. Because there are other there might be other uh, brand that will give you the same uh, the same uh, product or service quality, you know. But for some reason, um, they will choose uh, customers choose a particular brand. Uh, this and then that brand become very popular. So the branding, branding um, simply means the process of shaping all the perception that by that uh, that are created in our mind by the brand logo. So let me put it this way: a brand is more than just a logo. Uh, it's more of I, I already mentioned that it is more about perception, perception. So um, the building that perception in you or in, or in a product, the process of um, shaping that perception by creating unique identity for the company or product or service but through various marketing efforts, we call it a branding. So now, one good thing about the brand that it can differentiate um, a product from the uh, competitors. Now, each time I go to buy a cologne, I'm looking at, I don't have much of my at Versace. Why? Because I love it. I like the brand. It is expensive, but it gives you what you want as a cologne. So, um, when you walk into a, a you know, a, a, a car um, parking lot or a garage, you want to buy a car, like this particular car, people buy a lot. They call it to, um, Toyota. They buy it a lot. Why? Because people have that thing in their mind that Toyota is associated with durability. So a lot of people buy it. It's, it's, I mean, some years they even sell more than US old car because of that same thing. And if it has a problem to fix it, it's not a problem. Yeah. Now, um, uh, any question before I continue? No question? No. Okay, good. Now we'll look at the branding strategies. Yeah, so a few of the branding strategies. Well, the first one is brand identity. Now, um, when we say brand, 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 so, sorry, brand identity, we are referring to those um, visual representation of a brand. Things like logo, color, uh, typography, and um, design elements. So with this, with this brand, a, a brand uh, identity, uh, we, we business can stand out in a crowded marketplace and create a sense of familiarity. Okay, now I'll give an example with MasterCard brand. As you can see the logo of MasterCard. If you see this logo anywhere, you know it's MasterCard. So uh, it, it's a very strong brand identity because it helped, you know, it communicates a lot of messages to us when we see it. Then brand personality, um, 
which is, which are the human characteristics that a brand embodies. Okay. So we have that uh, a brand that have a um, strong personality are often more memorable and reliable consumers. You know, uh, so they are also emotional, uh, you know, they have emotional connection with their target audience. Now, let me see a best way, uh, two examples I will use to explain uh, how brand personality works. I use Coca-Cola. In the video, in the video, they mentioned Coca-Cola too. So the Coca-Cola have three positive attributes uh, associated with, um, with the product, and they are bubbly, cosmopolitan, it's everywhere. And of course, palatable, very tasty. So uh, I have bubbly, cosmopolitan, and direct, uh, you know, um, place. So now, <clears throat> that's the top, top three attributes. Cosm bubbly, cosmopolitan, and palatable. It's, it's sweet, delicious. Now, it also has negative attributes because it is associated with um, price. Some people say it's, it is overpriced. Some say it's not. Well, some many people say it's overpriced. Some say it's not. Wimpy and deceptive, you know. Now, uh, I would like, if, if you are, when you have a chance, explore why this, uh, some customers describe Coke as overpriced, wimpy, and deceptive. Now, how about Apple products? So, um, Starting from the time when Apple brand is um, his personality, so well, that's a starting point for Apple brands. So um, usually is how the brand makes you feel. Apple brands uh, have to the the uh, their brand personality um means or uh, refers to how they make you feel if you have Apple products. So now it is also about lifestyle imagination. Liberty regained, innovation, passion, dreams, hope, power to people through technology. All these things have to do with uh, brand personality of Apple. We have them, you feel this way. Uh, then let's say brand positioning. Okay. So in that this case, what this involve um, identifying and communicating a brand unique value, proposition, proposition so, and then, you know, how it the brand differentiate itself from the competitors. So usually um, um, a company will need to have a clear and compelling brand positioning because if they do that, you can help them attract and retain customers by appealing to their specific need, needs and necessities. I think well, that's, what, that, that's uh, what people believe that brand position is, you know, to accomplish by through a good brand positioning. Now I'm gonna give you <clears throat> uh, two examples or, or even three. Uh, probably I will make it three when it comes to brand positioning. There's a strategy that we call quality-based positioning. So Apple used that kind of that uh, model to sell their products they have high quality. <clears throat> so and I, and I like, and like you know, the three main factors and that, and that, that allow Apple to stay ahead of the competitors includes innovation, design, and customer experience with their products. Okay. Then there's price-based positioning strategy. Netflix use that. Uh, <clears throat> they target the audience, you know, uh, uh, with low price films and TV. You know. So now, as of today, they will have one of the largest TV audience in the world. Netflix. They use streaming service. Okay. And this one is brand to storytelling, which involves using a narrative techniques to create a brand. Okay. Yeah. So you tell this about brand story. Uh, usually, you um you can craft a brand story that that can help businesses establish an emotional connection. With the target audience, I give an example with Coca Cola. Uh, they advocate happiness in its consumers, which is uh, central to the land, uh, sorry, to the brand brands products. There are other brands, you know, uh, other strategies, branding strategies. I will, I, I encourage you to, you know, explore more of those uh, when you get a chance. 
So there's one, this one called brand extension. So in this case, um, the business, uh, ex ex uh, you know, extends, uh, you know, the original brand. Uh, let, let me put it this simplest way. The um, company that is involved, they leverage on a brand existing reputation. Because they, like, a company like Coca-Cola or Mercedes-Benz, they already have a re re reputation. So the company now, brand extension means leveraging on that, taking advantage of that, that um, reputation and equity to expand into new products or new services. So with this brand extension, uh, your business can increase revenue and market share while strengthening their overall base. So now there are two types actually of, of extension. There's, there's one uh, line extension. In this case, um, the brand or the company that owns the brand launches a, a new product that will already be familiar with this audience. Okay. Uh, a good example, the most uh, when Coca-Cola released Diet Coke. People know that Coca-Cola is already a very popular company. And so it was not difficult for them to sell that. Complementary product brands, uh, should be should. yeah. So this is when a, a brand releases a new product or a company releases a new product that complements uh, itself, okay? Okay, now, um, now the complementary product uh, brand in this case, the company releases a new product that complement the current existing product. I use a Colgate as an example here. I've seen you know, Colgate is a toothpaste company. And when they release toothbrushes, which should be complementary to their toothpaste, the people who buy Colgate toothbrush, toothpaste want to naturally want to buy Colgate uh, toothbrush, you know. Then last one method of branding is called co-branding, yeah? Uh, so uh, in this arrangement, two established brands, we team together to, uh, to collaborate to offer a single product or service that are carried at, you know. So uh, <clears throat> now, like I say, you, you, you use this, you can use this arrangement to sell products, a lot of, you know, products. If you, uh, like, like the example I gave before, somebody who opened a restaurant, a new restaurant, uh, then, and they want to co-brand with, um, let's say, Subway. So that's going to be possible, depending on, of course, it's going to be difficult to co-brand with Subway. So, Subway is already, already made the brand and no nationwide, but it happens sometimes that people can just um, co-brand, company can co-brand to another company that is already known. So in that relationship, both parties contribute to something. Or the value, then you know, uh, the process the process will now continue, you know, begin like that. I'll give you an example. Uh, Nike and Apple collaborated to create Nike Plus, which is a product that allows Nike shoes to communicate with the Apple iPod. So, um, and of course, it caused the, the company to uh, one of the things that made the company to grow. Okay, then Spotify and Uber. Uber and Spotify team up to create a unique Inca experience. That's another one too. Uh high brand. Yeah. Right. Now let's see. Um then the brand license. When you have a brand, you can um license the brand. But most people that, that do brand license, what they do is somebody is an, an, an unknown brand already. You can um you can lease the brand or rent it. And to use this in association with a product uh, or a set of products. I'll give you an example. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, Trump, many hotels you see in America, even outside America, with the name Trump, are not owned by Donald Trump. But those hotels are leasing, they are leasing the, uh, his name because Trump hotels, Trump. Um, uh, 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 Trump is known for he has a they have golf club, golf club and all other things and they are known for quality service. So that means that quality service other companies, other restaurants might open a, a an unknown restaurant might rent 
paid uh, Trump some money to not use his name and logo in his hotel or in her hotel. So Trump makes a lot of money through that way. Without doing any business, you can still get money from this kind of um, licensing and endorsements. Uh, anybody can do that as long as you are willing to work hard and build a business. So I think um, we can cover this. I, okay, let me give you an example of people that did that license. You see, Disney. Well, Disney was an early pioneer of brand licensing, and it remains a leader in the area in its wide world, uh, you know, um, entertainment and toy, toy brands. Now, let me show you how uh, Disney sell the like, license to their brand. Now, so there are some companies that make toys. They might, they might build toys that are shown. They, are built, they might build toys that are... Uh, a car that is shown in Disney movie or in Disney book, they might build a toy with that name, and that made them to sell more toys. So uh, Disney make money through that. So things like Star Wars, Disney princesses, Toy Story, Mickey Mouse, and so on. All these toy manufacturers can uh, pay millions of dollars to this uh, Disney to buy the rights to, to produce and sell products affiliated with uh, those super brands. Now, um, at this point, I we have uh, three minutes left. I can't do motion for three minutes. So I'll let you go. Um, please do not forget to read the chapter of the week, uh, which is chapter 14, I believe. Give me a minute. Yes, chapter 14. Finish chapter, finish this uh, um, presentation. It's very self explanatory. Watch the videos. And then do your homework at an assignment, which is test 11 by Sunday. Any question before we leave? Thank you. Any? No question? Okay, good, good. All right, see you guys next week. See you. Have a nice day. You too. Bye.